Hey everyone, welcome to my, well I don't know if this is a channel or if this is my page, so welcome to Fernie Talk, Fernie Talk Live. My name is Fernie, I am your resident psychic medium and spiritual person, and on today's show I am going to talk about the holidays. I'm also going to discuss with you astral projection, what it is, um, and what people's experiences can be like when they are having some astral projection whether it's a dream or whether it's an experience itself. Um, as always, I do have to go over a little disclaimer before we get started. So the following program is intended for mature audiences. Fernanda Marone and guests are not licensed medical doctors, counselors, attorneys, or law enforcement officials. So for legal medical advice or treatment, please consult a licensed professional. You are 100% responsible for the choices and decisions you make in your life and are fully liable for any outcomes which may occur. This does include posting comments on Facebook or asking questions and then that coming back and biting you in the butt, um, which is very interesting because that's actually what happened last week. We had a, a person ask a question on the Facebook uh, live and a video and well, their family members saw it and then they weren't too happy about that. So if you guys have any questions you want to ask me, I am more than willing to answer your questions. I look forward to answering your questions. I am not going to be answering questions about your departed loved ones today. I am only going to be answering questions about your love life or your relationships, your family members, health, well-being. I mean, anything you want to ask me about your life and circumstances you want to know about. Try to keep your questions short so that it's not too long to read through. Um, but at the same time, be specific because I'm not a mind reader, so I don't know everything. I don't see everything. Um, but I will try to give you as much detail as I can sense when I am tuning into your specific question. So go ahead and post those now. Um, and at some point I will get to your questions and I will try to answer as many of them as I can. Um, so before we begin, let's start with the holidays, right? So holidays, I am so ready for the holidays um, to be done with <laughs> because now it's like it's like you get to a point where you enjoy it you're looking forward to it and then all of a sudden you have to buy gifts you have to go Christmas shopping and I haven't done my Christmas shopping yet and it's getting closer and lately I just go on Amazon to make a list of all the people I've got to shop for and I go start shopping um, and I haven't done that yet and I haven't even made the list yet so I'm a little bit freaked out because we're getting closer and closer and closer. I am probably not going to go shopping at the store. I mean, I don't know about you, but whenever I go to a store, I get a little anxious and especially around the holidays when there's a lot of energy in the air, people are freaking out. People have got all that mental chatter going on while they're in the, in the aisles of the store. Um, and I just pick up on all that and it makes me tired. It makes me drained and it makes me feel like, blah. So I try not to go shopping on busy days, let alone busy days during the holidays. That's probably not what I'm going to do. There is one thing I have to go into a store for, but I'm going to try to be smart around going in to get that. Um, but, you know, it is that time of year. And so I hope you guys are not stressing out about the holidays. I know I'm not. And actually, it, you know, this year I've been telling everybody, don't buy me anything physical, really. Like, if you're going to buy me something, get me, like, food or get me, like, an experience. You know, give me a massage or give me something I can eat because I don't want to store stuff. And I guess every time people, you know, buy us stuff, we want to hold on to those things. And then we end up holding on to things we don't need. And then we start to accumulate, right? And I've been practicing minimalizing my life and trying to simplify things. So I'm trying to like get rid of all the excess and just hold on to the things that mean something to me. It doesn't mean I'm not going to have anything. It just means I don't want to have all this excess. Um, and so I've been telling people, don't buy me stuff unless, you know, it's something that I really, really want. And I think the only thing that I really, really want this year, which I don't want to spend the money because I feel like it's just a waste, is I have an old model Kindle. And I like it's, I mean, it's the old model where like you type, right? Like you type the letters on it. Um, and it doesn't have a backlight to it. And I mean, I, it's like I've had it forever. And, you know, I go through periods where I read a lot and then I don't read. And then I read a lot and then I don't read. And so I would like the one of the newer models to have a backlight on it. But I just cannot bring myself to spend the money on something I already have that works perfectly good. So I'm just like, uh, I don't really want to spend the money on that. So if I really was going to want something that maybe would be the thing that I would want. You now my sister asked me what I wanted yesterday and I told her, I said, well, you know, get me this book. And it's a book that's like this thick, but I've read it before. I have the, the, 
I have the, well, actually, I've had the book several times, and I keep loaning it out, and I never get it back. And then I keep buying it and loaning it out, and never getting it back. Um, and so I asked her for this book. It's like this thing, and there are like three of them that go together. So um, that's what I'm expecting from her. And she said, "Yeah, I'm totally gonna get that." So I'm looking forward to that. Anyways, guys, so astral projection. Let's talk about astral projection. Now, I've mentioned this on my Facebook page i've also mentioned this on my youtube channel i do have a video about astral projection on there um and by the way guys if you have questions you'd like to ask go ahead and type those in the comments section below and when we get to the that portion of the 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 um show i will answer some of your questions i'm gonna try to get as many of them as possible again be mindful of the questions that you do ask because your comments are public and i will not be responsible if you post something out there you don't want people to see that and it comes back and bites you in the ass that's your problem not mine right but be mindful but please ask specific questions about any life circumstances you are dealing with we won't be answering any questions about your loved ones in spirit today that's a completely different type of show so what i'm going to do is also so I'll get to that later on, but go ahead and type in your questions now. So when I get to it, I've got plenty that I can go through at that time. Okay, so let's talk about astral projection. So a lot of people don't know this, but throughout the week, every single week, we have a tendency of disconnecting from our bodies. And I know you're wondering like, what? What do you mean disconnecting from our bodies? Um, what happens is we are not meant to be here like all the time. Like the physical world, this dimension, this 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 time, this space, this this um, level that we exist on the physical plane is only a place we come to to utilize it as a tool because it is. It's a tool for us to have certain experiences. It's almost as if like some of us, I don't know if you've ever watched Star Trek, but on Star Trek they have this like thing called a holodeck where people go in and they experience like reality, but it's virtual. It's not real, but it feels real. It's kind of the same thing. You know, here in the physical world, it's our spiritual species is spiritual species virtual reality place it's where we come and we experience certain things with each other and from ourselves and so when we get here before we get here we have a plan we have an idea for what we would like to experience whether it's for fun whether it's just because you know it's something we are striving for and believe it or not some of the things that you experience some of the hardships that you go through in life are actually planned out in advance you chose them and i know you're asking well fernando i didn't choose to have a drug addiction or fernando i didn't choose for this to happen to my sister or i didn't choose to have you know the horrible life that i had with parents and i didn't choose to be abused well i'm here to say that yes you did and i know that that's gonna be hard to hear and it's probably gonna cause you to if you don't agree with me you'll probably shut me off at this point but i came to learn that a long time ago and i am one of those people i mean i was abused as a child physically mentally sexually emotionally i mean you name it i was abused as a child and i'm going to do a video about that so you guys understand like how much um but i dealt with abuse as a kid and i've dealt with a lot of issues my mom is schizophrenic i mean it's just life is rough right life can be tough and we come into life with some of those things chosen for our own soul our own spiritual like um awareness and experience we choose it for the experience it's actually a part in a very good movie that we all choose to play but once we get down here we forget all about that right we forget that we were in a place in a state of euphoria up there and that euphoria is kind of like if you've ever like had a glass of wine and you start to feel that little buzz and you're like oh man i feel great i feel good and you're at a party with a bunch of people you're getting along with people you feel like you're you feel good, you're having a lot of fun, lots of laughter, and y'all are like, hey, let's all get together and let's like do a boot camp together and I'll do a boot camp and you do a boot camp. Let's all go Friday. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's like having a good time. Everybody's buzzing and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And then the week goes by, Friday comes along and we're like, why the hell did I sign up for that? I don't want to do a boot camp. I don't want to, you know, and so that's what it's like being here. We all signed up for some of the lessons, some of the experiences we've had here. We get down here and then we are in boot camp and we've forgotten all the things that we decided to do before we got here in, in this physical form and in the, you know, putting on the face that I know of as Bernie. And we forget and then we're pissed off because we're like, life is cruel. Life is horrible. You know, it's all messed up. But we chose, our, we chose for ourselves to come into this plane. So while we're here, we are allowed to have breaks. And I know you're like, well, what do you mean breaks? Like, like I can't die for a minute. No, you don't die. But you have momentary, momentary um, experiences where your spiritual essence or that you, the awareness 
the you that is not attached to the body, that is individualistic, that is you, the essence, it separates from the physical body. And it usually happens when we fall asleep. So during the week, throughout several periods, of, uh, uh, throughout several weeks, throughout several days, we will have moments where our spiritual essence, our awareness, our spirit disconnects from the physical body and begins to ascend back to its higher realm and to the the space that we know of as the other side or, you know, um, heaven, whatever you want to call it. During that process, some weird things can happen. And many people report having this sensation that they've got someone sitting on their chest or someone's pushing them down. Some people describe not being able to feel like their physical body and they're, um, they just, they can't feel anything. They feel like they're, um, what's the word? They feel like they are, um, well, basically, they can't move, uh, paralyzed. They feel like they're paralyzed. Some people describe the experience of having shadows in the room that they're in, or they feel like they're floating above their body. And so everyone's experience is different, but some weird things happen. Some people feel like they're vibrating. They can hear a swooshing sound. They can hear buzzing. And a lot of people have these experiences, and they don't know what to call it. A lot of people think that it's like, oh, I'm being attacked by a spirit or an evil entity or something because they can't move, or they feel like someone's there. Now, technically, it's actually you coming out of you. So as your body separates, you are aware of you. You are aware of you. And so it feels like a, a, another person's there. And it's scary because we don't know what it is. So our natural tendency is to be afraid. But it's just you with you. And so it's not another entity or another person. It's you out of you. Now, sometimes there are other beings or other entities there. But for the most part, it's just you with you. And so... Those are those are our experiences, and so as we separate and we disconnect, we go into another plane. We have experiences. Sometimes we see other people in other houses in other rooms. Sometimes we ascend to the other side and we visit our loved ones. It just depends on the unique experience you are having. But when it's time to come back, there's two ways of coming back. You either just wake up and you naturally slide back into your body, and then you wake up, or something jars jars you so much that your spirit. Like immediately, like as soon as your body's like, wake up, wake up, wake up, your spirit like zooms back into this state and that zooming effect actually causes you to feel like you're falling. So if you've ever had that dream where like you're like f falling off a cliff or you're falling from a high space and then you like wake up and you're jumping, that's actually your spirit like r r not running, but literally zooming back to your body so quickly that it hasn't had an opportunity to connect properly. And it, because it's happening so quickly, it has that effect of falling. And so you'll have those visuals and those images of falling off of a cliff or high place because that's your brain's way of trying to make sense of that data, that information. So that is astral projection. And we uh, are allotted several opportunities each week. I mean, in the night, people can actually project several nights in a row. You can actually learn to do it at will. Um, and there is a person who learned how to do that. His name is Robert Monroe. And he's actually responsible for the Hemisync series, which now there's a lot of audios out there that talk about like hemispheric synchronization, which is you put like headphones in your ears, you listen to tones, and in your brain, there's a reaction. And that reaction causes you to feel and have different sensations. And so Robert Monroe was this radio, um, I don't know if he was a radio operator. He had a radio station, but um, he learned about the frequencies and he began to experiment with them. And what he realized is that he could actually manipulate his consciousness through this. And so the U.S. government back in the 70s, they used it when they were using their spy program. Um, but it's a really cool series, Hemisync. Now it's called Hemispheric Synchronization or um, and there's different, uh, there's isochronic like tones and all that. You can find it on like Amazon. You can find it on iTunes. And if you have the subscription service like I do, I can like download a bunch of them for free, but um, it's it's a it's a great way to try to do this at will. But Robert Monroe also wrote several books, and um, he wrote several books about his experiences. There's also another person named um, I think it's Robert Moody as well, or something Moody, not sure which one, but he also wrote books. It's called Adventures Out of the Body, and um, it's pretty interesting. So if you ever want to learn more about um, astral projection or disconnected from the body, which we all tend to do, um, then Go ahead and check those out, and I hope that you enjoy reading them. I know I did. It was very eye-opening for me. So we do. We don't always – we're not always in our physical body. Sometimes we just disconnect and check, check out for a little while. And, I mean, especially during the holidays, I would probably be, like, checking out on a regular basis just because things are starting to get a little heavy and people are freaking out because of the holidays. So, all right, guys. So let's get over to your questions. So I want to answer some of your questions. Um, okay. So let's start with 
Um, okay. So, Ali, I love your question, but it is way too broad. I need you to get specific. So I need you to ask me about a specific situation because that's going to be a whole reading. So if you're asking, like, what do you see for me? That's a whole reading. And that would require me to spend some time in meditation, tuning into your energy and going over every single area. So I'm not going to do that, but I want you guys to ask me specific questions. Um, so let's go over to, okay, let's go over to Kayla. Kayla's got a good question here. So, Kayla, will my financial situation get better, new job, or any good change coming my way? Um, Kayla, I don't see a new job for you right now. I think you might see or be made aware of an opportunity in February, March, just right before tax time. If you don't go along with that, you'll still stick with what you've been doing, and then you might not make a change until August or September. So that's what I would suggest is just kind of if you don't go with that option in like February, March. So, but financially, you got to get better with the way you spend money because I feel like the way you're spending money is not working in your favor. I also feel that you might be trying to support too many other people, meaning that you might be loaning money or you might be trying to compensate for other people and, you know, and I would say living beyond your means. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Just kind of learn to budget yourself a little bit better. Financially, I do see an upward, um, momentum when we get into April or May. So when we get to April or May, I do see more money coming in, but it's only a little more. It's not like a drastic amount. So, but if you, you know, and, and most of us have this problem where if we make more money, we spend more money, right? And so if we learn how to live off of very little money, then we won't spend very much. And when we start to have more money, we can save it, we can invest it, we can use it later on. So I, th I think it's so smart for us to learn how to live with less so that we can appreciate when we do have an opportunity to splurge or to, you know, treat ourselves, we can really appreciate it. So I would try that attempt. And I know that's what I'm, I'm currently learning because, you know, it's like from, from my perspective, like I grew up very poor. Our family didn't have dirt um, and I had no money. And so as I got older, I started to, to, to earn more money, but I also started to spend more money. And so I got into a, that habit and now it's like me trying to find a balance between that. It does work. I do. I have some money that I invest now. I, I do a lot of investing and trying to make sure that there's going to be money for the future. But still, it's hard because you get used to spending money and shopping. So and that's what I would suggest. All right. So let's go over to. Oh, let's see. I think um, Monique. Hi, thank you for my previous message. Oh, you're welcome, Winnie. Thank you for asking the question and for giving me the opportunity to be able to help you with your question. I know sometimes, guys, I can be a little blunt or like in your face sometimes. Um, and I've had people who absolutely hate me the minute they talk to me because I'm so direct and honest about what I'm sensing and feeling. And I always tell people like, I'm sorry, but I don't want to bullshit you around. I want to be honest with you. Um, and then they come back like a year later. They're like, well, you were the only person that was honest with me and you're right. So you know, I need you to tell me the truth now. So it's good because, you know, if you don't want to know, then don't ask me guys. Um, but I'm going to try to be as honest. I will try to be like, you know, nice about it. But at the same time, if you need to hear something a certain way, I'm going to, going to dig into it. So let's go over to, um, let's see. Oh, Michelle, Michelle says that, yes, that has happened to me. So I'm assuming you're talking about the astral projection. Very, very common. I mean, it's so many people are, are weirded out by the whole experience, but it's really quite natural. And it makes perfect sense why we would take these breaks because we're not meant to be here like on a regular basis. It's like, it's like an actor on stage. It's like you, they're not there for hours and hours and hours and hours acting and acting and acting and without a break. They get their breaks. They get their five-minute cigarette break, break or their five-minute coffee break. We're the same way. In spiritual form, we need breaks sometimes, right? So let's go over to another question. Um, oh, much, uh, Monique has another question. Do you see another baby for me? I'm seeing the number three. So I don't know how many you currently have, but I am seeing the number three. So if you already have three, that is it. If you do not have three and you only have, you have less than that, um, then I do see the number three. So I feel like you have the option for three. I also feel that September is going to be significant or there's a likelihood of potential baby energy around that time, September, 2018. So if you are going to have another child or you're going to get pregnant, it may come up around September, 2018, but I am seeing the number three. So there may be, there may, may be another one if you if you don't have three yet. Um, okay. So let's go over to, I've got Brenda here. Is my son going to pass kinder? Um, Good question. You know, I actually failed the second grade. I sure did. I totally failed the second grade. Um, and I like went in and like, you know, the, I remember the teacher too. And she totally failed me. Um, but I don't even know why, like how, 
how do kids fail those grades like kinder up to like maybe fourth or fifth like i don't understand how kids can fail those grades because i mean even though we are given lessons to learn and all of those stuff it should be more based on participation right it's like if we're not participating then what the heck um do i see your your son passing kinder um i think so but i feel they're going to make recommendations for some things you need to do with your child on your own or on your free time because there may be some reading comprehension challenges that are kind of holding um, them back. So there's some re reading comprehension stuff. There, that is, he's struggling to read. That's what I was talking about. Um, and so, um, yes, so I feel like they will, but they're going to suggest helping them with reading as they move forward. But I do feel that they will. Um, I don't even know if they have summer school for kinder, if that's even a pop possibility, but that may also be an option. But I am seeing movement forward. I'm not seeing like, okay, I'm stuck here. So I feel like moving forward. But when you get to the next grade, that's the one that I think would be a little bit more trouble because um, um, they may get into some challenges there, but it's more behavioral. So that would be a different story. But I do think they'll probably get past kinder. Okay. So let's go over to... I've got Liz here. Liz, my oldest brother is in the hospital, very ill. Is he going to get better? I'm assuming you say get better. Um, when I tune into your oldest brother, um, here's the thing. My feeling is that there's a couple of compromises. One is I think the liver is struggling to keep up. So I feel that the liver has got either some challenges or there's something that might be affecting the liver that is going to come up or is coming up in, in this regard. Um, I also feel like they're, they might, I'm seeing the blood going up and down the sides of the head. Um, I feel like the immune system is compromised and it's as if something may have triggered it, but I feel like the immune system is compromised. So I feel like it probably, it needs to be stabilized first and then they can, have, they can deal with the other. You know what? It almost feels like he in some way may need some sort of a replacement or a transplant because I feel like something needs to be replaced. Something needs to be replaced. Um, I don't know if it's the liver though, but it's something needs to be replaced, but I'm also seeing the blood and something compromising the system because the immune system's dropping. So I would say is they need to get the immune system like viable so that they can continue the toxicity level needs to be drained. So I feel like there's a toxicity issue here where there's toxicity built up in the system or the bloodstream. I also feel the liver may be having some challenges. I also feel there is something that needs to be replaced or that needs to possibly even some sort of a transplant that may kick into gear at some point if not now within the foreseeable future which would be within the next two years there would need to be some sort of and remember i'm not a doctor so i can't diagnose this is what i'm getting like as far as energy wise so there may be some sort of a transplant related thing that needs to occur um there's something in the blood that's causing all this like the system's freaking out because of this of this of what's in the blood and the immune system down so i think there's a few things that need to be like addressed I am not going to tell you whether he's going to make it. If he's not going to make it, that's not my place to tell you that. Um, but I will say that I feel that if he can get past the next week, week and a half, then I feel like an upward momentum as far as like healing and recovering or being able to like manage the condition or the situation. So I think the next week, week and a half is going to be critical, but I think there's going to be some sort of potential replacement of something that needs to happen in order for he for he to do much better in the future okay um so let's go over to uh, let's go to kimberly do you see any changes in my love life although it's a general question i'll still answer it so do you see any changes in my love life um yes i see two options and i feel like there might be competing options so i think that at some point you might be dating or dealing with one person as that's happening and another option is going to come up. And I think you're going to have two competing options. One is the one you've already put some energy into, but there's just not a lot, not enough there to keep going with it. The other one feels like there's potential, but I also feel it's not really going to get you very far. I think your expectations are a little high or not realistic and then you're like Fernie, like no my expectations are good like what are you talking about like i'm i expect to be treated well i expect to be treated good like calm down calm down girl um i feel like your expectations are that people need to be up to the level that you want them to be because you expect yourself to be up to that level it's great if you're going to go into a relationship i would just say look at the person for who they are accept them as is try not to change them and if you start getting into the mode of changing them you're in trouble and it's probably not going to work out but what i would say is um, there's these two options that are going to be coming up. And honestly, I feel like you might even know both of the options. So they may be two people or individuals that you've already been dealing with or had a connection with to begin with. Um, this is within the next three or four months. So I feel like from now until December, October, November, no, December, October, just October, December, 
December, January, February, March. So over the next four, throughout the next four months or until March, you, this might come up as a challenge or an issue. It's which one you choose, but honestly, I'm, not, I'm kind of feeling a dead end with both of them. I would highly suggest you get The Soulmate Secret by Ariel Ford. It's a really great book, and I will post a comment. Once we're done, I'll post a comment and attach it to this, um, to this video. But um, the, the Soulmate Secret by Ariel Ford, because there's some, some um, let's call it practices or exercises that will help you to kind of like tune in and energetically align with the right options, because I feel like the options you're, you're, inter you're bringing into your life are, are not viable. And I also feel that you might have a tendency of wanting to improve or help people. And this may cause you to turn others into projects. And then you become resentful because you're trying to help and they're not really wanting to, to take it on. So I think that might be an issue there. Okay. So let's go over to, um, let's go over to Cecilia. So Cecilia, I just went back to school after 20 years, scared I won't succeed. Do you see me getting my degree? Yes, I do. Do not let anyone tell you differently. The only issue that I think is going to come up. Now, here's the thing. School's going to be hard enough, okay? I'm not saying you're going to get through with straight A's. You, you might struggle a little bit there, um, especially with math. I think math or numbers are just not your thing. So I feel like that's the area you might struggle the most with um, because of the way that you originally learned it versus the way it's going to be taught. With that being said, do not let anything get in the way of you pursuing this because I feel that um, you have a tendency of worrying about everybody else's issues and you make those your priority. You take those on as your responsibility. But part of the reason why you do that is because it is a, an excuse or a way for you to not focus on what you need to do for you. Don't do that. Don't let anybody else's stuff get in front of your own stuff. You need to focus on your goals. And if you have to say no to people, even to family members, and just step away from the family dynamics for a little while, then do it because this is the most important thing, okay? So you stay focused. And I think if you do that, you'll get way further along than you expected. All right, so let's go over to... Um, okay, let's go over to Maria. So Maria, so... Hi, Fernando. Hope you are having a good day. I am having a good day, actually. Um, my my head was like like this earlier. I think when I do so many readings, um, I had 10 today. So I had readings 10 back to back. And so after like that many readings, my head feels like it's like bigger, like five times big. But it's because there's so much information that comes through that it builds up. But I'm only staying focused on what I'm focusing on that it like can cause a little bit of a headache there. So I had to like, Ugh. but after I was done, I had to go take a shower, like freshen myself up, get pretty for this video. Um, so I was like, let me go do that. Okay, so let's go over to your question because I want to get to your question. Um, please tell me how it looks for my husband. His, he's scared. He's going, um, they are going to lay him off. If anything is going to happen, it's going to be, I don't think it would be before the holidays. I feel like it'd be around the end of January, early February. What's interesting is I feel like he, either, it's weird. It's, it's almost like there's going to be three options. He's either going to be forced to take a package or a leave without the promise for a return um, if, they, if they do decide to bring them back um, or he is, um, or there is going to be a layoff or he's going to be forced to take on a position or role and the pay is going to change. And I don't think he's going to do that. So my thinking is he might actually end up leaving. But if this happens, this might not happen until the end of January, early February. What I would suggest, even though he's freaking out right now, he needs to stop waiting for something to happen and he needs to get ahead of it. So he needs to start getting his applications ready, getting his resume ready, start to hit up any friends or people that he knows that will help him find something else. So that way, if this comes up, he can go ahead and just go with another option. Here's the thing. Even though if this may come up, it may not come up until the end of January, early February. I do see a change of work situation for him regardless. So whether he gets laid off or not, his work situation seems to be changing around May or June. When this changes, I do see him working for another company or a company that is like a sister company. So if he starts the process now, he might just want to, might as well get in there and then probably make some more money. But if he waits around, he might be sitting without a job for a little while and then it's really going to hit y'all. So he might need to get ahead of it. And then that way, like 
let's say I'm wrong. Let's say January, February comes around and he's still with the same company. That's great. I'm still seeing a change in, in the summertime. So this might still be happening and he might hear about it in January, February, but it doesn't actually kick into gear around June, May or June. And that's the, 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 the challenge with psychic sensing. When we're sensing into details, we have to kind of piece it apart because it's not like it's a plain, simple answer that we can read and say, oh, well, this is what's going to happen. No, it's like the components are there, the feelings are there, and I'm having to sift through my mind and figure out what it is that I'm actually seeing. So something is changing May, uh, May or June. So if he wants to get ahead of it, I would just suggest he hit everybody up um, and he might actually get a job with um, someone that he knows like a family member or a friend because there may be an opportunity there with a business or a company that does um, – it's not the same kind of job. It's a different kind of job. So it might either be contract work or something that's like maybe seasonal, but it might be something that might be worth it for him. So I would say he needs to look into that and don't wait for someone to test, tell you it's over, like get ahead of it. So that way you're not caught off guard. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to answer two more questions. So let's go over to, um, see, here we go. This Brenda was saying he's struggling to read, which is what I mentioned. He was struggling to read. And that's what I thought that was the issue there. Um, okay, so let's go over to do, 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 do. Heather. Hi, Fernando. Happy holidays. Oh, happy holidays to you too. Thank you. That's very sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, do, 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 do. actually, here's a question Do you see marriage with my current relationship and children? Okay, so I think that yes and no. I feel that you might have an opportunity to move this over to the next phase or the next stage, October, November, October, November of next year, 2018. So something may come up around that October, November juncture that may allow you to move forward, excuse me, to move forward to another phase of the relationship. But I feel like you make that jump and it's going to feel like you're, it's too soon and they're not ready. And so... I almost feel as if the jump forward actually creates more challenges than it helps. And so then you might feel like you need to backtrack, but then you might get to a point where you're feeling kind of like, maybe this isn't, maybe, I don't know if I can, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like dipping into a pie and it's, it's not ready yet, but you've already dipped into it. So you're still trying to cook it, but it's like already been eaten. It's already been, it's, it feels tainted. So what I would say is to slow it down, take it easy don't expect a whole lot from this person because I don't see them moving a whole – I don't see them moving very fast at, in the beginning. Actually, I don't see them moving very fast at all. So it might take them a while just to get to where you need to get them to get to. But the opportunity comes up around like October, November, and then if you jump ahead, um, I do see there being baby potential next February. Not 2018, but going into 2019, there's a lot of baby potential or baby energy in early that part of um, the year, 2019. So – that would be a time for babies. What's interesting is I'm not seeing marriage yet. So this might happen before um, before uh, you get married. So be mindful, okay? Be, be, be careful. If you're not ready to have it yet, be careful, be protected, and then you can choose a little bit at a later date. But you might need to be patient because I feel like this person's kind of dragging a little bit, um, and it may take them up to maybe two or two and a half years before you get to a place where you could say this is marriage, it's time to get married, and we can go ahead and do this, Okay. All right, so let's go over to, um, let's see. I'm going to answer one more question. Um, okay, so Cassie. I've got a question from Cassie here. Um, Casey, um, you're welcome, Heather. You're welcome. So do you see me and my husband fixing our relationship and being happy? <sighs> Casey, I feel like, you two have changed with each other. And I feel like you've just become different people. And I feel like that first, like that first year of the relationship or the first seven to eight months, I think we're on, like there was like, I think you were both like in it for the same reasons, but I feel that as the second year kicked into gear, I think things started to change. And then I feel like it's just been this ongoing like struggle. Um, what I feel is that, your husband may not be communicating everything that he is going through. I think that he is mentally and emotionally struggling um, just with other things in life, not necessarily the relationship. And I feel because of this struggle, um, he's pulling and detaching himself and he might be like looking elsewhere for support or for 
people to make him feel better about the situation. And I'm not saying that he's going off and running off with other people. What I'm saying is he might be reaching out to others. And then it's it's almost as if he's not trusting that connection or that that bond with you anymore. And he's not trusting that it's going to benefit him or that you're going to be there for him, let alone he be there for you because you might feel like he's not making the relationship a priority. So I feel that's a couple of things going on there. And I don't mean to blame the husband altogether. Like we have a tendency of always blaming the men in the relationship um, because, you know, something's going wrong, although it tends to be a norm, right? Where men tend to be the ones messing up. But in the on, on your angle, I also feel like you – are trying to go back and I don't think that's a possibility. I think you need to go forward. I need to think you need to embrace and accept the issues that are there before you. And I think that you need to move forward in acknowledgement and in and embracing those issues and just saying this is what it is. So let's find a new balance. Let's find a new normal. Let's find a new place where we can work with each other and work towards joint goals without trying to drag the, the, the past back in and make it make the relationship like it wasn't and that's that happens a lot with people where they get into a relationship you know it changes people change with each other they stop communicating with each other they stop bonding with each other they stop trying with each other and then they want to go back to when it was first started and that's just not realistic and honestly not a lot of relationships linger on in that phase that's just the beginning phase that's the phase of I don't know you too well, and so I'm just going to be myself, and oh my God, you're letting me be myself? Oh my God, I'm so happy that I can finally be me, and I can finally express myself fully, and vice versa. But then all of a sudden, our issues, our personal issues with, in, in ourselves, and in our personal issues with people start to come out, and then relationships get realistic. And that's where you have to find the balance. So I feel that you guys, this next six months is going to be pivotal. If you're going to work on this relationship, it has to be within the next six months. If you don't get things worked out in the next six months, I'm kind of feeling a split or um, a vibe of like going in two directions. And I feel that part of it has to do with you forgiving the past, letting go of the past and not trying to drag the past up, but also at the same time, your significant other communicating with you and and coming to you for that that sense of support and not feeling judged or not feeling ridiculed. And I think that will help you guys a tremendous amount um, if you can work on it in the next six months. If you don't, I kind of feel like this is probably going to go in this direction. So get on it now before um, before you let too much time go by and you say, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And you're like, well, you didn't do anything. That's what you did wrong. Okay. All right, guys. I love you. I am going to take a couple of weeks off of social media in this way. I'm still going to post some videos of my regular Fernie talk, but um, I'm going to take a couple weeks off from Freddy Live because of the holidays and trying to deal with all of that stuff. So I'm going to kind of like mentally check out for a little bit. I love you guys and I will post when I am back, which will probably be in the new year. So it'll be like a couple of weeks from now. So I am sending you lots of love. I'm wishing you the very best for the holiday season. Take care and I will talk to you again next time. Okay. Bye.